Yo yo, hey there. My good friend Salt07G sent me a package. I'm really excited to see what it is. I'll admit I was a little harsh and overdramatic when he told me to review Kid Icarus, but I really want to see what he has in store for me this time. It sounds like a video game. Well, it smells like Microsoft. It tastes like Xbox 360. And it feels like... Forza Motorsport 3! Man, Forza is such a good franchise, definitely one of the best racing simulation series out there. Okay, let's open this thing up. Why does he do this to me? Okay, so we gotta set up the Kinect. Shouldn't be that hard, right? Wrong! First I gotta get it off my shelf, which is already quite the process, I really need to get more space in here. Now we gotta unbox the whole thing, and look at all that spaghetti. And hey, would you look at that, free tech support from Target. Okay, now we're getting into the actual process of setting up the Kinect. First we gotta plug in the HDMI for the Xbox, then the AC adapter for the Kinect, plug the USB into that USB, and then plug the USB into the Xbox, and then you're ready to go. Uh... Figure out why your Xbox isn't turning on, have a mild panic attack, and think you're going to have to buy another Xbox just for Kinect Adventures, realize that you just didn't plug the AC adapter into the Xbox power brick, then turn it on, and then you're ready to go. Okay, the Kinect sees us, and now we're moving the Xbox menu with my hand! No more fooling around, I'm on a mission. This is Kinect Adventures for the Xbox 360. Well, alright, here we go. The game starts off with giving us some friendly advice for our Kinect gaming experience, but if you ask me, I think we're gonna be alright. It's not alright. The problem here is that my room is pretty small, and the Kinect wants you to be in the better portion of this map, but due to the size of my room, I can only be in the good portion. I tried moving the Kinect backwards, but the Kinect has to see the floor, I guess, so we're just gonna roll with this. I haven't used my Kinect in quite a while, so I figured I should probably calibrate it. How do you do that? Included in your copy of Kinect Adventures, there's a calibration card. Look at this guy, he's awesome, I'm gonna call him Cardi. Cardi has to get his eyes checked for this calibration process, he's gotta get some glasses, and after he finds the pair he likes, we're done. Okay, I believe it's time that we finally start to do some gaming. There's five games, and in no particular order, let's review them all. First off, there's Rally Ball. You hit a dodgeball at some blocks while constantly rallying it. Pretty self-explanatory. There's special power-ups you can get, and you can also get hot, fiery, fast serves. Hand motions worked pretty good, going side to side was a bit of a challenge, and using my legs to hit the ball did not work good at all, but like I said, the main problem here is my play area. Next up is River Rush. I like this one, you shift back and forth on your raft to go through these slalom-like poles, and you gotta jump and go on these rocky ramps to get these tokens. I had to get used to the jumping mechanic in this game, I was for some reason expecting to do little short, subtle jumps, but no, you have to jump. But yeah, this is one of the better games in the collection, it's pretty alright. The next game is 20,000 Leaks. This is... probably the worst game in Connect Adventures. River Rush had you actually moving around and all that. Rally Ball you just kinda stood there, but still, your limbs are moving around frantically to hit the ball. With the door shut and with my hoodie on, I'm not gonna lie, I was starting to sweat quite a bit. 20,000 Leaks on the other hand, you just kinda... Probably the worst part about this game is trying to use my legs to plug up the leaks. You're probably thinking, well, it's probably your play area. I'm still in the good range, the best part of the good range, and yet the Kinect can barely read my legs. Anyway, yeah, all you do is plug up leaks in this game. Actually, when I think about it, most of these games are literal death sentences. Rally Ball isn't too bad, but you could probably get hurt with a bunch of dodgeballs and flaming ones at that. River Rush is like the definition of speedrunning the grave. You're on an inflatable raft on a river with rock formations that you could crack your skull on, and also you gotta maintain your balance the whole time. Then there's 20,000 Leaks, where they put you in a glass box that constantly cracks under pressure, and don't forget the sharks. Please don't forget the sharks! Okay, rant over, on to the next game. Reflex Ridge. I like this one, it's basically just an obstacle course in the sky where you avoid obstacles. You have to shift side to side, jump over things, and even crouch to avoid said obstacles. It's funny because how you go faster is by jumping, so if you want to go fast, you just have to... So yeah, pretty simple, pretty good. Okay, the last game, Space Pop. 
Why is this a game? All the other games have made somewhat sense, but Space Pop, you pop bubbles. In space! You just shift your body side to side and step forward and backwards while flailing your arms to float. It's alright, not bad by any means, but that's kind of the situation with the whole game. It's not bad, but it's just there. Well, that's all the games, but there's a few more things that I kind of want to go over. Pictures! During the games, you'll see this flying camera take a picture. And it's not a picture of the gameplay or anything like that. The Kinect actually takes a picture of you and displays it on the screen after you finish the game. This can lead to some pretty funny moments if you're playing the game with friends or family, but for me who has to record this in my room all alone, it just made me contemplate what I was doing with my life. There's also living statues, which you get by completing adventures, which adventures are just playing the games. Living statues are these cool collectible trophy things, but the neat part is that you can record your motions and your voice into the statue, which also leads to some laughs. Like here, take a look. <laughs> And here's me moving around while reading the back of Sonic 2. Sonic and Tails team up! Super speed! Sonic's back and better than ever! He's a blur in blue! Well, that's pretty much Connect Adventures, a goofy title in the Xbox 360 library. It's charming for sure, but the problem lies with the Connect itself. Being $150 at launch and Connect Adventures was the game you got? Yeah, it's easy to be a little disappointed. That shouldn't stop you from having fun with this game, though. I mean, I'll admit, I had quite a bit of fun with the stupid living statues, but the actual games themselves aren't bad, and they can be quite a bit of fun with friends and family. On your own, though, and especially if you don't have the greatest play area, the game can get old pretty quick, leaving you to put it back on the shelf where it belongs. Is it fun? Yeah, it can be. Would I recommend it? No, because I'd probably get made fun of. But in all seriousness, give it a try if you want, but don't expect too much.